advising Guyana's financial crime investigations accused of overlooking government corruption. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Thursday, July 12th from the CMC News Center in Bridgetown. I'm Dawn Paris. Good evening. British fraud expert Dr. Sam Sittlington, an advisor to Guyana's special organized crime unit, SOKU, came under attack on Wednesday from opposition parliamentarians who accused him of turning a blind eye to instances of government corruption. And they've demanded that he resign from his position at the unit, which is taxed with probing financial crimes in the country. The call came during what was supposed to be an anti-bribery and corruption forum organized for members of the National Assembly in Parliament chambers. The call came, but the government defended the UK expert and accused the opposition MPs of ambushing him. Turn this into a lynch gang is not helpful. It is not helpful. The intention is clear, patently clear, by calling for Dr. Sittleton to resign because because I want the I want that statement to be withdrawn. That statement of Sittleton resigning should be which should be withdrawn. That statement because it's intended to lynch. The heated discussion occurred during a special seminar hosted by UK advisor to the Special Organized Crime Unit, Dr. Sam Sittlington, who sought to sensitize a group of MPs about what to look for as it pertains to money laundering, corruption, and fraud within public offices. After his lengthy presentation to the MPs, PPP Member of Parliament Harry Gill questioned the advisor as to why no in-depth investigation was being done into alleged corrupt practices of the current administration. I am sure you and, and the cases I've mentioned here are in the news all the time. So you can't just turn the blind eye to that. You must wake up one day and say, you know something, this doesn't sound right. Let me check it out. You've never had the thought of investigating these cases, sir, as an expert, and perhaps advising the government that this is not the way to go about business? Dr. Sittlington, in response to the concerns raised by MP Gill, explained what it is required by SOCO prior to investigations by the unit into any allegation of corruption. There are many citizens around the world who suspect corruption in government, and uh, some sit idly by and, and accept it, and others will campaign for it, uh, against it. Uh, and others will report it. But once, uh, if you report something as a citizen, then uh, it has to be looked at. I mean, I, that's the best I can tell you. The mechanisms for each country, how they do that will be different. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan, who chaired the forum, interjected during the squabble and expressed the opinion that the opposition attended the seminar with an ulterior agenda. If he is indicated that it is not within his terms of reference, that he can go and investigate that which he might have seen because of what you're saying or what's in the newspaper. He cannot do that. As he has indicated quite clearly. But then he should resign. Well, okay, he should I, resign. I, I, that is because it's, it's a uh, conflict of interest. Right, well, uh, and it's not doing really good for his portfolio. I'm not harassing anybody. The UK advisor further posited that the unit investigating corruption must be made independent from any other institution aligned with the government or any political influence. It is my view that there has to be anti-corruption bodies in place independent of any government or any, any um, law enforcement. And a task force uh, contained within that body to investigate corruption who cannot be influenced by anyone who is a decision maker. So it has to be kept independent from even uh, law enforcement. Thanks to Javon Vickery of HGP Nightly News for that report. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness has given instructions for measures to be implemented to strengthen the oversight powers and governance control of public bodies. This is in light of the operational weaknesses at the state-run oil refinery Petrodam, which is at the center of accusations of corruption. 
Holness said that in the Petrodam matter, assertions have been made that suggest permanent secretaries have significant authority over operations. But the parliamentary opposition is adamant that everyone involved in the scandal should, should be held accountable and ultimately removed from their posts. When will other managers at Petrojam, whom you have enough information about in terms of their own roles in the many breaches that have taken place, when those separations will take place? Remember, I was indicating to you that it was unfair to ask me when other managers are going to be dismissed. As the minister, what I give is general policy direction. That turnaround should begin with the new Petrojam board. Plus, Christopher Zaka will be in charge of a team doing a strategic review of the oil refinery. Other team members should be announced next week and the terms of reference shortly after. Now, Petrojam's $13.9 million retainer contract with Main Event, a public relations production and marketing firm, also forced Cabinet to make changes. All soar, sole source retainer contracts will require prior approval by Cabinet. All other retainer contracts must be brought to the attention of the Cabinet. Then there's the issue of donations. Dr. Andrew Wheatley told the House on July 3 that Petrojam made 102 donations in the last fiscal year, totaling 74.8 million Jamaican dollars. In moving forward... The Ministry of Finance must establish a ceiling for donations under which the board approves. So there must be a ceiling, whether it is going to be 100,000, 50,000, but there must be a ceiling that the board approves. The Ministry must establish the number of times a single applicant may benefit. Full disclosure is also required for connected parties. So if you are applying to a company, you should disclose that my brother works there or my neighbor works there or girlfriend. Government entities funded from the Consolidated Fund will no longer be allowed to make donations unless it's for staff welfare and matters dealing with human resources. Meanwhile, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips said the Prime Minister's announcements were common sense positions, insisting that with all the breaches, Dr. Andrew Wheatley should be fully stripped of ministerial positions. If that doesn't meet the standard for which someone should be held accountable, God knows what would in his government. This government has nothing to hide, and we are not shielding anyone, and we are not covering up anything. We want to get, we want to get at the truth. That report from TVJ News. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley has said a firm no to declaring a state of emergency to deal with escalating crime in the Twin Island Republic. The number of murders so far this year is inching closer to 300. But speaking on a local television show, Rowley contended that government has not lost the battle against criminal elements. And he dismissed calls for the state of emergency, saying that had been tried before and it did not fix the problem. In fact, Rowley said the previous state of emergency had destroyed the economy and started some of the problems the country now faces. Meantime, National Security Minister Edmund Dillon is insisting that his ministry and supporting agencies have what it takes to control the crime situation. He sought to give the assurance at a news conference on Wednesday afternoon. Crime is a situation that faces every country in the world. There's not a country in the world without crime. We in Trinidad and Tobago, there's a situation right now with respect to crime, criminality, and violence that is intolerable. Mm -hmm. We're going to treat with crime and criminality in Trinidad and Tobago, bringing all agencies of national security to bear. However, with members of the public, particularly in Carinage on Monday, expressing a view that the government's crime plan is too surface-oriented and is not addressing the social and cultural root causes, Dylan insisted that is not the case. He said he is fully aware that crime is complex and comprises of many layers and that the initiatives to direct youth away from the wrong path are already in place, including a key initiative that will be unveiled next week that will aim to empower communities. And so we have to tackle it 
at a different level, a different kind of intervention. You'll have seen some measures being taken, please. For instance, the Chinabago Police Youth Clubs. Right now, there are about 15,000 young people in Chinabago Police Youth Clubs, oh, and yep. we have to build from the society, from the young people up. We regain our value system, understand what is right or wrong. And the minister was confident that there is enough public trust in the national security agencies to build that relationship. That report from TV6. A former UE Mona employee is suing the university. We'll tell you why after the break. Stay with us. Starts from sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe. Music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th, because the beach really is just the beginning. Join leading media and communications executives, as well as climate change experts in Kingston, Jamaica, from August 13 to 15 for the Caribbean Broadcasting Union 49th Annual General Assembly. This year's assembly, held in partnership with the CARICOM Climate Change Center, explores the theme, Building Resilience to Climate Change, Business, Technology, and Content Options for Caribbean Media. Featured presenters include the Honorable Dr. Rural Reed, Jamaica's Minister Responsible for Information, the region's Chief Climate Change Negotiator, Mr. Carlos Fuller, the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, the Broadcasting Commission of Jamaica, and the International Telecommunications Union Caribbean Office. And broadcast manufacturers and media services enjoy special exhibition rates at this year's conference, joining premier exhibitor Utilsat. For more information on discounted rates for delegates staying at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel or flying on the official airline, Caribbean Airlines, Go to the CBU website or call the Secretariat. The CBU looks forward to welcoming you to this key conference on climate change and the Caribbean media. Her passion for what she believes is unmatched. So you couldn't, I wanted to get to the point where you can shake me off that perfect piece. As a book off, radio host, philanthropist, and motivational speaker. And I said, I'm going to write you a check for 10000 which I'm not. <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body. I get that some help to transition. I'm Karita D, and you're listening to Girlfriend Get a Life. Welcome back. We continue in Jamaica where a former employee of the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, has sued the institution. Alton McCloy claims the environment in which he worked exposed him to asbestos, which caused him to contract mesothelioma. And he has filed a claim seeking damages for negligence and breaches of the Occupier's Liability Act. Mesothelioma is a type of cancer which is especially associated with exposure to asbestos. It is known to take a long time to develop and the symptoms often do not present themselves until the cancer has progressed to later stages. In his claim, the 53-year-old McLeod alleges that between Mar March 2010 and August 2016, he worked as a stores attendant in the pathology department at the Mona campus and the university failed to ensure that his place of work and the system of work at the institution were safe and he was exposed to asbestos. McLeod is asserting, asserting that this exposure caused him to contract mesothelioma, which has caused him to suffer losses and incur expenses. A former Attorney General in Grenada says the issue of whether the country should have a sex offenders registry should be put to the public. Cajetan Jones is part of a team of Grenadians who have come together to establish a website dedicated to raising awareness of sexual violence on the island. The website is expected to serve as a launching pad towards the development of a sex offenders registry. We get more in this GBN News report.
should sex offenders be named and shamed through the establishment of a sex offenders registry? This is among questions that should be ultimately decided by the general public, says local attorney at law and former attorney general Cajetan Hood. The local attorney is among a cadre of Canadians who have forged a partnership in the development of a new online website, www.sexoffensesgrenada.com, which brings Grenada one step closer to the establishment of a sex offenders registry. Developed by Nigel Jones, a local app developer based in Canada, the website envisions effective fact-based information about sexual offenses, laws and policies which promote public safety. Sometimes you don't want to complain about a situation, maybe a situation of um, sexual abuse, a situation of, of domestic violence, and they are scared to make a report. Guess what? We are, we, we are working with the police, that's the intention, so that a person can give information through that website anonymously. Attorney at law and former Attorney General Cadrington Hood says among the many features of the website, people will have the opportunity to give feedback on whether they are for or against the establishment of a sex offenders registry. We would prefer, based on our discussions, if at least we start a public debate on the issue. Because, because the website creates an avenue for persons to give feedback on different issues. Yes? So I believe once there is a public debate, public dialogue, persons um, come on board and say, look, that's what we believe, that's what we think, that's what we don't think. These are the pros and cons. That we can spark that debate. We can publish the results. In the last assizes, which ran from April to May 2018, there were 133 matters before the court, 53 of which were sexual offenses. Mr. Hood says with the prevalence of sex crimes each year, he believes this website will lead legislators to fast track the move towards the establishment of a sex offenders registry. Because I believe that before that kind of registry has to be done, there needs to be some legal basis for it. So it means I believe the Parliament of Grenada should get involved, um, the, the administration should get involved in that debate, and I would say maybe the Ministry of Social Development, Social Services should take the lead from the government standpoint on it. So the plan is to start the debate, give an avenue for people to express their opinions on that. Lines 4 to West Indies make a solid start to the second test against Bangladesh. The details when we return. This hurricane tip comes to you complements the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and the Caribbean Media Corporation. Be prepared. Stock disposable plates, cups, and cutlery as there may be no water for washing dishes. This summer and fall, Brilliant Barbados is offering you hotel discounts of up to 40% off regular rates. When you book through Expedia before October 31st, 2018, discover our Dine Around program specials and participating restaurants across the island, starting from U.S. $50 per person on three-course meals. For further information and full details to book your Barbados holiday, visit BrilliantBarbados.com. When you buy a ticket on LIAT, outside of the taxes paid, you're getting more than just a flight. You're getting well-trained, qualified, competent crew. The newest, fuel-efficient, environmentally friendly aircraft. The best aircraft maintenance process and people to get you there safely. More destinations and connections with partners than any airline in the region. All so that we can connect you to special moments with friends and family, festivals and fun. We connect you to your business associates, which helps you and the region's economies to grow. So there is more to the fair than the flight. LIAT, the Caribbean Airlines, more than connecting the region.
Wendy's opening batsman Craig Brathwaite smashed its eighth century to frustrate the Bangladeshi bowling attack on the opening day of the second test at Sabina Park on Thursday. Brathwaite was dismissed on 110, which he made from 279 balls, while Shea Hope will return to the crease on Friday morning with an unbeaten 84 from 98 deliveries. Hope and Kiran Powell chipped in with 29, while Devon Smith was dismissed for two in the morning session. West Indies closed the day's play on 295 for the loss of four wickets. Let's take a look at the final ses session of day one. So this is highlights of the, the last session. Shimon Hitmeyer set about the bowling. Rathit was misstumped. This was when he was on 82. Didn't touch anything, so should have been taken by the keeper, but it was the Hitmeyer show. Got somewhat of a chance here. At 29, would have been a tremendous catch. Craig Brathwaite just continued on. Hitmeyer was going after everything that was loose. Ah! This was a close call. They decided not to go for the review. Should have. Took the pad first. And he was pretty much in front. It may have gone over the top, but it would have been worth a review. He was on 98 at that point. And Hetmeyer was making the spinners, giving them a headache. And this was Brathwaite's 100, his eighth in Test cricket. Played well for it. And 50 coming up for Shimron Hetmeyer, who the bowlers never seem to ha really have an answer to. Brathwaite yeah. chancing his arm. And eventually caught at straightish short mid on, trying to hit one over the top. Went pretty hard. But Hetmeyer was unfazed, joined by Rustin Chase, who's struggling for form. He continued to take advantage of anything that was loose. Beautiful drive there from Rustin Chase. And Hetmeyer straight down the ground, just bubbling with confidence. He's to put on a, a partnership of 49 in 52 deliveries. To athletics now, 16-year-old Jamaican sprinter Brianna Williams made headlines after copping gold in the women's 100-meter finals at the IAAF Under-20 Championships in Finland on Thursday. She beat American to Nisha Terry for the gold with a time of 11.16 seconds. Terry took the silver in 11.19 seconds and Crystal Awo of Great Britain claimed the bronze in a time of 11.37 seconds. It's a clean start and a good start from Williams, the 16-year-old ahead of Terry at the moment. Awoa trying to keep up, but here comes Terry, championship record holder, is going to have to push because Williams is holding her off. Williams has taken it in 11.15. It's a surprise victory. Terry, the championship record holder, held off and Jamaica have gold on this third night of the World Under-20 Championships. She's only 16 years of age and she's now a world champion. Brianna Williams with a brilliant run to take the title for Jamaica. 11.16 seconds and to Anisha Terry, she fought, she surged, but she couldn't get Williams. And it's a goal for Jamaica. Earlier, the Jamaican pair of Damian Thomas and Orlando Bennett swept the 110 meter hurdles in the men's, that is. Thomas captured the gold in a time of 13.16 seconds, while Bennett was right behind, crossing the finish line in 13.33 seconds to take the silver. They are away, and Thomas gets on there. Fall and Lopez, Spain, he's out of it. Another one's gone as well. Hurdles crashing everywhere. So let's watch Thomas. It's the two Jamaicans at the moment. Damien Thomas, destiny for him, 13.18. He is the world champion, Damien Thomas. Well, there was a lot going on in that race. 
including a faller, the Spaniard Lopez, very, very early on. But it is a moment of destiny. He fell two years ago in Bidgosh. But he comes through to take the gold here in a Jamaican 1 2. Izumiya of Japan took the bronze. Meanwhile, Wayne Pinnock copped Jamaica's first medal in the long jump on Wednesday. TVJ's Jordan Fort reports. Pinnock continued his impressive season and didn't fall too far off his personal best of 7.99 meters, leaping 7.90 on his first attempt to cop bronze. The event was won by Japan's Yuki Hashioka with a best effort of 8.03 meters, while Michael Vidal got silver in 7.99. It's a very great feeling, knowing that um, I'm the first under 20 boy to get a bronze in my country. Um, I was also looking forward for a new personal best, but I didn't. It was a great feeling. It was very competitive. Um, the, my competitors were, were, were really tough. Uh -huh. And I got the brand, so yeah. Jamaica's other competitor in the event, Shaquan Coke, finished seventh with a personal best 7.73 meters. After looking like a sure medal candidate throughout the round, sprinter Michael Stevens had to settle for seventh in the 100 meters in 10.31 seconds. The race was won by Lalu Mohamed Zori of Indonesia in a national junior record 10.18 seconds. And that's the sport. We'll be right back. Her passion for what she believes is unmatched. So I, I wanted to get to the point where you can shake me off that perfect piece. He's a book off radio host, philanthropist, and motivational speaker. And I said, I'm going to write you a check for 10000 which I'm not. <laughs> Spirit, soul, and body. I'm Karita D, and you're listening to Girlfriend Get a Life. A recap of the major developments of this day, a British fraud expert advising Guyana's Special Organised Crime Unit is accused of overlooking government corruption and called on to resign. And in sport, West Indies make a solid start to the second test against Bangladesh, closing the first day's play on 295 for four. And that's Caribbean Newsline for news and sports from the clock. Subscribe to canonnews.com. And for more of our programming, log on to caribvision.tv and subscribe to Caribvision's YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMT News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.